the work really stemmed from us um, start, starting a clinical trial looking for systemic uh, treatments for patients who may have chronic HPV infection. And it was a nationwide study open at two centers. And what we we're finding is that um, every patient got a baseline chest CT scan before they enrolled in the trial. And we started finding lesions in their lungs that the patients weren't aware of. We wanted to report on the fact that human papillomavirus, uh, which is the most common uh, sexually transmitted disease in the, in the United States, as well as the world, um, can infect the lungs. And uh, there are different types of HPV um, types. Um, there's the high-risk HPV, which causes um, HPV-associated cervical cancer and head and neck cancer. But there's also those low-risk HPV types, type 6 and 11. And HPV type 6 and 11 typically cause um, genital warts, but it can also infect the upper respiratory tract. And um, what we are reporting is that we're finding that the virus can also infect the lungs. And this is a, a disease process that is not well appreciated in the um, medical field. HPV type 6 and 11 when it infects, infects the upper respiratory tract, we call that disease uh, recurrent respiratory papillomatosis because uh, the disease keeps on coming back. Once it infects the upper airway, it can also infect the lungs. And there really aren't any good treatment options if the virus infects the lungs, such that now the virus can continue to replicate and um, grow, and there can be these uh, lumps or benign tumors in their airway, which causes uh, recurrent pneumonia or breathing problems. Some of the symptoms of recurrent respiratory papillomatosis are a uh, hoarse voice, which doesn't get better, um, trouble breathing, uh, someone who may have uh, chronic HPV infection in other parts of their body so that they're HPV exposed. Uh, someone who may be, um, have an altered immune system or may be immunodeficient. Those are all risk factors for um, HPV infection.